Hi, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website, which is eight self improvement lessons. It's free, non commercial. It's from what I've learned from 31 years of being a family therapist. Lesson four is uh, some concrete ideas on how to improve the relationships in your life. This video um, is a suggestion to watch your mental thoughts and language about a particular word that is very provocative in some relationships and some families. The word is abuse. In my experience as a family therapist and uh, as someone who observes the media, I notice that there is widespread misunderstanding of and misuse of uh, the words abuse and abuser and abusive. I want to offer you some perspective on that uh, that will give you some healthy choices. <clears throat> In my opinion, three conditions have to be true for behavior to qualify as genuine abuse. Abuse really does exist, no question, but it uh, exists less often than you think. Can you name the three conditions that have to be present in order for behavior to be true abuse? Most people cannot name these conditions. The first is, person A must be dependent on person B for something really important. Children, for instance, are dependent on their adults for food and shelter and education. Young children can't get these on their own. They're totally dependent. So that's condition one. Condition two is person B must use person A to gratify some need of their own in a way that hurts person A. So if a parent um, sexually molests a child to gratify themselves, the adult, that has massive traumatic hurts to the child. That is using another person to gratify your own needs. There are many, many other examples. That was a pretty dramatic one. <clears throat> For example, someone who, an adult who uses a child as an adult confidant and expects the child to listen patiently as the adult vents and complains and whines and badmouths other people in the family. That is a way of using a child's innocence and naivete, um, and that qualifies as abuse. The third condition that many people overlook that's required for abuse to be abuse is that person B, who is being used and hurt, cannot flee, they can't get away, and they cannot defend themselves. This is true of all children who are being used or harmed by stronger self-oriented adults. Three things have to be true for abuse. Person A must depend on person B for something. Person B must use <clears throat> person A to gratify some needs of their own in a way that harms person A. Finally, person A must be unable to flee, leave, get out, get away, or must be unable to protect themselves in an effective way. When those three conditions are all clearly present, then person B's behavior is abuse. When only one or two of those conditions are present, or even none of them, it, the behavior is not abuse, it is aggression. A logical reaction at this point is for you to shrug and say, well, gee, that's interesting, so what? There's a big so what. Would you rather be accused of being aggressive or being abusive? Notice your reaction. Abuse and abuser and abusing are what I call hand grenade words. They have a high emotional uh, response content. What do you associate? Think, stop and think for a moment. When somebody says, he or she is an abuser, 
What do you associate with that? Selfishness, um, bad behavior, bad person, right? The associations of these powerful words, abuser, abusive, abusing, abused, there are some very negative connotations that people semi-consciously evoke. Anytime they hear those words or think them or speak them or read them, those associations often poison relationships and exaggerate people's reactions to behavior. They uh, increase stress in relationships and families unnecessarily. You may or may not agree with this point, but as a family therapist, I am advocating that people stop and think before they use the words abuse, abuser, abusing, abused. It's much less provocative to say aggression. He or she was aggressive with their child rather than abusive. Um, try this out in your mind and verbally and think of anybody in your life that you judge as an abuser. Try out thinking, well, actually they're aggressive. See if that makes any difference to you. And if it might make some difference in people attempting to do problem solving where there is aggressive, harmful behavior. This has been a tip as part of lesson four in the Break the Cycle website. It's one of many ways that you, through added awareness and knowledge, can improve your relationships. I hope this is useful to you. Thanks for watching.